Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the anatomy of the rotator cuff. As a lot of you guys know, I'm an athletic training student, so anatomy is something that I go over on a daily basis. I really want to do more of these type of videos where I study and review anatomy, that way you guys can see how I go about it, and we can also study and learn together. The rotator cuff is made up of four different muscles that all help to stabilize and move the shoulder. Those four muscles are the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. Before I learn everything there is to know about the rotator cuff muscles, I'm going to be going over the bony landmarks of the shoulder. I think going over the bony anatomy before the muscular anatomy is really important because the thing is that muscles attach to bones. So if you just know the bony landmarks like from the top of your head, once you start adding muscles into it, it will just become really easy. For the rotator cuff muscles, the main two bones that we're going to be looking at are the humerus and the scapula, but since I'm already at the shoulder, I'm also going to review some other bones as well. So first off right here, we are looking at a picture of the main shoulder joint, which is the head of the humerus and the glenoid fossa. For the humerus, there's only four different landmarks that are of interest right now. We have the head the bicipital groove, the greater tubercle, and the lesser tubercle. Obviously the head is like this really big portion that is at the top. As we move below it right here immediately, we have the lesser tubercle, and laterally we have the greater tubercle of the humerus. Now this space in between is known as the bicipital groove or the inner tubercle groove. Now we're gonna scroll down to the posterior scapula. Let me see if I could like zoom into it a little. There we go. So the landmarks we need to know for the posterior scapula are the medial border, the lateral border, the inferior angle, the spine, the supraspinatus fossa, and the infraspinatus fossa. So obviously the medial border is gonna be this border right here because it's on the medial side. You're gonna have your lateral border right here on the lateral side. The inferior angle is gonna be the tip inferiorly right here which sits around T7 or T8. Then the spine is gonna be this area right here which sits around T2. This space right here is where you are going to have your supraspinatus fossa and then right below it you're gonna have your infraspinatus fossa. Next up we have the anterior scapula. There's only like one muscle that sits anteriorly so there's not much bony anatomy that's relevant in terms of the rotator cuff. But you do have important structures like your coracoid, your chromium, your glenoid fossa, and your subscapular fossa. So right here in this space you can't really see it too well. You're going to have your subscapular fossa. This tip right here is the acromium and I know I didn't say it before but this bone is the clavicle. And then your glenoid fossa is where your humerus sits which is this whole thing right here. Then we have other basic bones that I'm not really gonna go over like your sternum and your clavicle. Alright so I just did the reviewing part and now it is time when the study part comes into play. I'm pretty much just gonna be drawing out to the best of my ability the bony structures. With this black pen I'm gonna draw like the bone itself and then with the green pen I'm gonna like pinpoint each structure. I'm gonna be honest my drawing skills suck they're terrible but this just helps me a lot when it comes to learning anatomy. So here we have what I like to call the finished masterpiece. Let's take a look at it really fast. So here we have my little drawn out humerus. I know it's not a work of art, but for me, this is like everything I need to like memorize the structure. Greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, bicipital groove, I have the head. Now we're gonna flip the paper where I have the posterior scapula and the anterior scapula. We have the supraspinatus fossa, the infraspinatus fossa, the spine, the superior angle, the medial border, the inferior angle, the lateral border, everything that belongs to the posterior scapula. Then lastly, the anterior scapula, we have this right here, which I like to call the subscapular fossa. It doesn't really look like it, but for me, it works. Obviously, the glenohumeral joint, we have the glenoid fossa and then the head of the humerus. We have my version of the coracoid process and the acromium, which does not look real at all. And then of course, just abbreviating the structures of the humerus. Now that we have our bony landmarks, drawing out the muscles is going to be really easy. Like I said, you're going to have four muscles in the rotator cuff and a good acronym to remember them by is SITS. You have your supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, and your subscapularis. To draw out the muscles, I like to use a red colored pen because muscles look red. Red just makes everything easier to memorize. All right, round two of Danny's anatomy drawing. So for 
for this, I decided to use two sheets of paper. In one paper, I would actually like draw out the muscles in reference to their bony landmarks. And on the other paper, I would write out their origin, insertion, innervation, and action. So we could use both of these papers, kind of like a cross review type thing. So let's start off with the supraspinatus. So it originates on the supraspinatus fossa and inserts onto the greater tubercle. It's innervated by the suprascapular nerve and its action is to abduct. Now I'm gonna look right here at my paper and I have the supraspinatus drawn out in a way that I could easily memorize it. Next to it, we're gonna have the infraspinatus, which originates on the infraspinatus fossa. It enters into the greater tubercle. It's innervated by the suprascapular nerve and its action is to externally rotate, abduct, and adduct. So right here again, we're gonna look at our little drawing and here we have the infraspinatus muscle. I know it looks really, really rough, but at the end of the day, this is what helps me. Terrace minor, it originates on the lateral border of the scapula. It enters into the greater tubercle. It's innervated by the auxiliary nerve. Its action is to externally rotate, adduct, and retrovert a bit. So again, we have the terrace minor muscle that I drew right here running from the lateral border all the way to the greater tubercle. Now the last muscle that we have, which is the only one that sits anteriorly, is the subscapularis. It originates on the subscapular fossa. It enters into the lesser tubercle. It's innervated by the subscapular nerve and its action is to internally rotate and help with abduction and adduction. Now we're gonna move it on to the masterpiece. And like I said, it's the only one that sits anteriorly. So this is gonna be my subscapular fossa and it's gonna insert right there onto the lesser tubercle. Now the last thing I like to do is get out of my seat because I hate sitting down and I like to actually go over the different movements of the muscles. So let's start off with the subscapularis. The subscapularis is responsible for internal rotation which pretty much is just like this movement. You're internally rotating your shoulder, bringing it closer to the midline. Then the supraspinatus, its main movement is to abduct, so to bring your arm fully up, that is abduction. Infraspinatus and teres minor, their main movements are external rotation, which is pretty much this movement right here, externally rotating. Now you can also externally and internally rotate with your shoulder up, so for example, this would be external rotation, and then internal rotation would be like this, which is why baseball players always have like shoulder injuries because they're always throwing and they're putting a lot of stress on their rotator cuff. Well, there you guys have it. That's pretty much everything I reviewed about the rotator cuff. If you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up and down below and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my weekly uploads. Also, let me know what you think about these type of videos. Should I keep doing them? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Is there like a muscle you want to see in like a next episode? Just let me know. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me, but always remember to stay hydrated.